Thanks very much. Well, um, ultra-safe nuclear. We're at the more of the Evinci side of the uh, scale. We're a small modular, a micromodular reactor. We are a, a graphite moderated helium cooled with a, uh, an, uh, an intermediate molten salt, potassium salt uh, and sodium uh, heat exchanger. We run at 45 megawatts thermal, 15 electric if we're producing electricity. We have a zero buffer distance, this based on the uh, Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission and the, um, what has been negotiating right now with the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which I'll get to in a minute. The MMR is designed around some intense investigations of previous nuclear accidents. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the few people in the room who's crawled around Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and Fukushima. Uh, so these, these are uh, garden spot visits. The Hyatt, the Hyatt Regency at uh, Chernobyl is a little iffy. <laughs> But there's a lot of, there are lessons to be learned, and the reason I put this into, I, you know, I mentioned nuclear accidents, and I'm actually going to go into this a bit more, is that when I travel around the world, but in the region where it's just my region, uh, guess what the number one question outside of Australia is? Safety. It, it isn't economics as the, the green movement have moved it here, but rather it is safety. And so... Let's just address it. Has to be addressed. Uh, MMR is fully uh, load following and dispatchable, and is uh, one of the things I found interesting is that it can run from uh, from uh, idle, which is five percent power, to one hundred percent power, slightly faster than a GE and a Westinghouse gas turbine. Oh, GE gas turbine. So I was really impressed with that. I, our construction time following licensing permit is scheduled at about uh, 18 months. First of a kind probably won't make it. So what does ultra safe mean? Uh, I, I love this schematic because this isn't just uh, uh, fiction where um, this is the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. The what the, what's going on there is that they have a, that larger building in the back is a, an oil burner that produces uh, heat and steam for the entire campus. And they're replacing it with an MMR that is going to be sort of in the basement of the same building in the middle of a campus of 35,000 people. So the the issues of safety become quite uh, elevated within, a, uh, within this highly concentrated popula uh, working population, mm -hmm. students. The key points are that there are no active systems or operator actions needed for safe shutdown. Absolutely none. Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission and the US NRC have reached the preliminary decisions that there are no credible event that can cause a release of radioactive material. This enables us to have a zero setback setback distance. The fuel can't be breached unless it goes over 4,000 C. Our reactor can't go over 1,000 C. It has a negative thermal feedback on the cross section to shut the thing down. It cannot go over 1,000 C, and yet the uh, the fuel is robust up to 4,000. Can't melt. Can't explode. People in the room know this. And as, as the prior speaker said, we wouldn't be up here promoting our technologies if we didn't believe in safety and the safety of our product. So I'm just going to, again, most of the people in the room know these, but uh, Three Mile Island uh, was, was this incredible, extraordinary sequence of operational errors I can't recall now whether there's eight or nine things that had to happen in exactly the sequence that they happened in order for the event to happen. But once it happened, 
Operator intervention was required. They screwed that up. Active cooling was required. They lost that. And the fuel melted down. Okay, lessons learned become obvious. Build a system that doesn't require operator intervention for safety. Build a system that, that uh, does not require active cooling to be safe shutdown. Build a system where the fuel can't melt. Chernobyl is a beast of its own. We all know that. Um, I, I, I address it in Asia because it is asked frequently in Asia. But uh, the, the, the rapid thermal events that were happening that caused the explosions, the fire, and the fuel destruction, lack of containment, these are just things that are not present in any Gen 3 plus reactor, ours included. Fukushima. Uh, probably one of the most enlightening part of my career was being uh, working for Tokyo Electric Power on investigating the causes of Fukushima, and that's a whole book by itself. But active cooling was required after shutdown. It wasn't available, led to meltdown. Active cooling failure uh, was required in the spent nuclear fuel pool, wasn't available consequences. And for those of you who want a, a mental picture of Fukushima, picture a, about a 20,000 gallon diesel tank on, on the wharf at Fukushima that was twisted like an empty beer can by the outflow of the water that had come in on the, on the tsunami. So this was the prime, there were three tanks. One was dislodged, the other two were twisted in like beer cans. These were the fuel for the standby generators. The, uh, you can obviously recognize a slide that is intended for a non-nuclear audience, but the U-235 fissions, the helium circulates and remove the heat. The molten salt removes the heat from the helium. Superheated steam is produced from the molten salt, electricity, and so forth. The salient parts of this, and this is uh, very similar to the, the natrium uh, structure. We have a nuclear island, in this case on the uh, lower left. The interface between the nuclear island and the non-nuclear island is, a, uh, is, is molten salt uh, conveyance and return. The non-nuclear island is upper right. Now, part of the significance of that is how to, how to design it, how to, sit, how, how to uh, get your licenses and so forth. But yet another part of it becomes uh, salient in the commercial world. And that is that the nuclear island, you're not going to get very many loans for the nuclear island. Uh, the, but the US XM Bank will write loan guarantees and in some cases actually be the loaning instrument. That's for the nuclear island. The non-nuclear island is conventionally financeable. Asian Development Bank, World, World Bank, other, it's, it's very financeable. So by designing it this way and partitioning this in these two pieces, we create something that has a commercial path to success, not just a technical path to success. Uh, indicative economics, I desperately hate LCOE. I hate it. I hate it, but people ask about it. Okay. Diesel, LCOE, in a moderate delivery, reasonable maintenance scheme is about 36 U.S. cents kilowatt hour. A single 15 megawatt MMR is running at about 18 cents. Now, we're not the cheapest game in this amongst any of these vendors, and I'll get to that in, a, in just a moment as to where we're looking. A larger cluster of the MMRs, we can drive the LCOE down to about eight cents. A 50 megawatt baseload wind and solar installation, and by baseload, I mean Elon Musk has a cut of it with power walls runs about 50 cents LCOE. 
Now, these are indicative economics with us, with USNC, acting as the independent power producer. So that's the way we are structuring ourselves. We're not structuring ourselves to sell reactors, but to sell power. And obviously, there will be situations where buyers will buy the plant. The indicative economics include decommissioning and waste disposal fees, that falling to be the third highest question asked, safety, waste disposal, and do you include the money for waste disposal in everything? And so there's your, uh, there, there's your, your FAQs and the primer that I, I give people who are going out with me. Okay, um, how can MMR help Australia? And this is why I'm based in Australia, in fact, uh, aside from the fact that I love it here and family here. There's about 4,500 megawatts of diesel gensets in Australia of installations of 20 megawatts or more. Um, there, that's a lot of diesel. One third of the diesel imports into this country fuel these, these diesel gensets. And I'm not talking about the five, you know, the, 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 the smaller, the, because the smaller diesels, uh, gensets, don't, the, aren't really accounted for in any uh, uh, national database. The 20 megawatts more are accounted for. About 5% of the carbon emitted by this country comes from, this, from these larger diesel genset installations. I put it, uh, I, I was asked to testify in one of the Senate hearings, several of us in the room were there, and afterwards I, I put it to one of the members and said, why don't you just remove the ban, let the market decide, maybe we can pull 5% of the carbon out without you having to spend anything. Well, okay, I picked the wrong person to. <laughs> <laughs> Not interested, so. We, do, we like some of the, like the natrium dis discussion, uh, we integrate fully with uh, wind and solars, partly because of the load following ability but uh, also because of the thermal capacity of the molten salt. So it's a thermal battery that we can use. Uh, we're sitting on, in a uh, off-grid or unreliable grid focus. Obviously, we're, all, we're speaking a lot about hydrogen and ammonia-based fuels and fertilizers in various situations. Perhaps the only distinction is that we can produce superheated steam at about 600 we can, the reason for the 600 limit is, is only the corrosion factor of the molten salt in the, in the heat exchange system. If we can get a, uh, a molten salt that was less corrosive that we could run a, a 30 or 40 year system on, we could drive it up higher. Our reactor will be quite happy, would, would quite happily produce, uh, run at about 900 C. So that's a, a slight distinction, but it has to be a tool where the, the customer wants that, uh, that, that distinction. Where we are, we have an order in Canada with uh, uh, Canadian Nuclear Labs, Chalk River, Ontario. We're scheduled for operation in 2028. I'm skeptical, but this is what the corporate uh, material says. Our second order is, as I said, the uh, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, again, scheduled for 2028. I can say that with a straight face. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not trying to be uh, too cavalier about it. We all know that first-of-a-kind projects are, are going to encounter struggles that uh, aren't going to appear on the first PERT diagram, so we have to live with that. We have a, uh, an FCM fuel, our, our fuel is FCM, it's a triso-based ceramic uh, coated uh, fuel. Our, our manufacturing facility in Oak Ridge is built and operational. This is the small scale uh, fuel plant. We're building a second one. Our reactor uh, factory is in final design. It will be also in Tennessee. It is uh, scheduled for uh, construction begin in 2025. Feasibility studies progressing on about 100 units. 
And I can tell you, uh, I'm getting really worn down traveling within the ASEAN region. Many, many of these feasibility studies are being transacted in the ASEAN region. And my, my comment, if I could get it to Canberra, is uh, Australia is, is about to be third or fourth in the sequence of a, adopting, whether it's our technology or somebody else's. This is happening in the region. Um, the, we'll be announcing two projects that I'm flying off shortly on to, to sign um, in, within the next uh, two months. There will be additional projects, again, in the region. The, there's an immense market out there. This isn't just USNC versus Natrium versus Westinghouse. I mean, there is such a, a massive imperative out there that I think it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> we are absolutely dedicated to our stakeholder engagement. And one of the things that uh, I, I find really powerful is that when we began our stakeholder engagement with the First Nations people in Canada, lo and behold, the Canadian First Nations people groups ended up investing in the company. So I, I took that as, a, as quite a, a nice endorsement and is, uh, is, is quite important to us. Another part of sustainability is that we're not reliant on HALU. We would like to use HALU. Everyone would if they could. Uh, but frankly, I, a, having a strategic business partner called Vladimir Putin is not a really high value proposition for us. Safety, I've mentioned. I'm, I'm not going to carry that any further. I'll just say thank you very much. <laughs>